Good, happy Monday evening. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. Let's get started. First up, Gastis acknowledges receiving email phone call on 2015 sexual assault from school official. Mayor Ted Gastis acknowledged Monday that he received an email and telephone call from a top school district official on September 3rd, yes, 2015, informing him that a sexual assault had occurred earlier that day at West High School. But the mayor said he did not realize the severity of the incident until last week when Hillsborough County Attorney Dennis Hagen announced that Brian Wilson of Manchester has been sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison after being convicted of aggravated felonious sexual assault involving a 14-year-old female assistant. Assistant Superintendent David Ryan told us, the Riley King Network, that prior to sending an email to Gastis and other school board members, he told the mayor in a phone call that a rape had occurred at the school. The mayor's first words back to me was to ask what color the boy was, Ryan said. I did answer him, but I was shocked by the question. Gastis said he recalled the email and conversation with Ryan, but said he did not recall Ryan describing the incident as rape. Gastis, if he used the word with me, then why didn't he use it in his email? Gastis asked. Gastis said he asked whether if it was a racial situation, but did not ask about the predator's color. I thought that was that I was having a private conversation with the assistant superintendent, he said. As mayor, I had to know if he had a racial incident. That was to be something that I should know. Gastis said he was also informed of the assault by the Manchester Police Chief Nick Willard shortly after it occurred. But he said at no point did anyone tell me of the severity of it. Hogan's announcement last week was the first public disclosure of the assault nearly 16 months after it occurred, prompting concerns about why school district and city officials did not previously inform parents or the public at large. Gastis on Monday convened a meeting of law enforcement and school officials to formulate a policy for informing parents of alleged criminal incidents at the city's school. He said after the meeting that officials decided the school district administration will communicate publicly to the extent allowed by law. In a statement, the district superintendent, Belog Varis, said, The safety of our students and staff is our first priority and we take this responsibility seriously and that includes keeping our families, staff, and school community informed. Gastis initially told the New Hampshire Union leader, a local newspaper last week, that he was not informed that a rape had occurred at the high school. He later clarified that he had been told by Willard of the incident at West, but said the discussion focused on a need to lock certain hallway doors at the school to block off the remote area 
in which the assault took place, in which students had been known to smoke cigarettes and marijuana. Gastis spoke to WMUR to WMUR, sorry about that. WMUR spoke to Gastis after being provided the September 30th, 2015 email from Ryan to members of the Manchester School Board, including Gastis, who chairs the board, stating that sexual assault had occurred. WMUR obtained the email from the source on the condition of anonymity. Ryan later verified in an interview that he had a written it and sent it to officials. The two sentient emails stated, Everyone, this is to inform you that a female student has allegedly begun the victim of a sexual assault at West High School today. School administrators and police department are investigating, and it is an open investigation. These details are not being released just yet. Ryan, who is leaving the Manchester School District Friday after submitting his resignation last November, said, I proceed writing that email with a phone call to the mayor. I spoke to the mayor directly on the phone. Gastis said the release of the initial email and Ryan's comments to WMUR comprised a politically motivated attack with no consideration being made for that young lady with respect to her privacy. Gastis said, at no point did anyone tell me the severity of it. It could be a minor thing, a sexual harassment, it could have been someone forcing a kiss on someone or someone touching someone. According to Hogan, Wilson physically overpowered her and forced her to engage in sexual accounts, which are detailed in the press release. Hogan said Wilson was charged with three counts of aggravated felonious sexual assault and an alternative theory of misdemeanor sexual assault. The county attorney said the jury acquitted Wilson of two counts of convicted him on one count of aggravated felonious sexual assault. Two years of Wilson's minimum sentence may be suspended upon successful completion of the sex offender program while incarcerated. Tow truck driver shot at trying to remove car, witnesses say. Witnesses said a tow truck driver attempting to remove a car from a street in Dorchester neighborhood of Boston was shot. The incident happened Monday afternoon on Lincoln Street. Sky 5 showed the flatbed tow truck surrounded by crime tape and police. Two witnesses said the driver was towing the vehicle when a person inside got out and shot the tow truck driver. No additional information was immediately available. Three boys charged with setting massive Sanford Mill fire. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. It's summertime and Maine's total weather has got you covered as you plan your work day, your weekend, or your local getaway. Like paddling through Maine waterways, one of our favorite summer day trips. Or what it takes to get your camp ready for severe weather. And to keep your family safe during a lightning storm. Check this out. Plus, why this summer will be different than last year. So join Maine's total weather team for Chronicle, a total summer forecast. 
Saturday at 12.30 on WMTW. Sponsored by Paul G. White Interior Solutions. Their investigation may be over, but fire officials are still working to extinguish the fire that destroyed the Sanford Mill. We have had numerous small fires in these buildings over the years. Uh, if you notice on the front of this building, there's a placard that the fire department put up there two years ago, which basically said stay out of this building. No interior fire operations will ever happen in this building. Today, the state fire marshal's office announcing that three boys ages 12 and 13 have been charged with arson for setting the fire last Friday. Using the investigative techniques that we, uh, we did, we were able to find some information that was available out there and followed those uh, leads as best we could and obviously they became fruitful as far as being able to find uh, what we were looking for. The fire marshal said the boys are cooperating and lucky to be alive. The Sanford Fire Chief adding that children starting fires is unfortunately not uncommon. A juvenile fire setter problem uh, within the state of Maine as well as the country is still quite substantial. And it's, it comes from a number of things of fascination of fire or, and, a, and a host of other things. But in this case, I think these people thought they were used to doing some things and I don't know whether they got away from them. But. Officials said that because of structural concerns, they are unable to enter the building and instead conducted the investigation from the outside. One of the most telling parts for us in our investigation was actually through the use of a drone uh, above the fire scene where we could actually see some of the burn patterns that we would characteristically look for inside uh, doing an investigation inside the building. The good news, two homeless men missing after the fire were located safely in Portland this morning. Okay, and there you go on that report. <clears throat> now let's take a look at your stock market now and see how your stock market closed for this Monday evening. And here's a look at your stock market right now. Your Dow Joe Industrial Average closed in the green and went up. Your S&P 500 index closed in the green and went up. Your NASDAQ closed in the red and went down. Our USSTK closed in the red and went in the green and went up. And VIX closed in the red and went down. Dow ekes out gain closes higher as bank stocks offset tech losses. U.S. equalities closed mixed on Monday as a rise in financial sector helped offset losses from a large cap technology stocks. CBO estimates 22 million more are unassured by 2026 under Senate Health Plan. Let's take a listen to this video from ABC News. Whoa, that's amazing. Hey, on the internet, I know a bunch of people who would love that. The internet loves what you're doing. So build a better website in under an hour with Ghost Central from GoDaddy. Type in your idea, select from designs tailored just for you, and publish your site with just a few clicks, even from your mobile phone. The internet is waiting. Start for free today at GoDaddy. Very busy morning in Washington. We're going to look live right now at the Supreme Court. Summer recess starts there today after the justices hand down some final decisions. The big one, what will they say about Trump's travel ban? All this amid speculation that Justice Kennedy may retire. That would be huge. The president focused his tweets on Russia over the weekend, and taking a new tack, appearing to admit Russia interfered in our election for the first time, but now he blames President Obama for not doing more. And it's what could be a make or break week for Obamacare repeal. The showdown is in the Senate. The GOP is still short of votes. And today, will the, Cong the Congressional Budget Office is going to reveal its score, how much the bill will cost, how many millions will lose insurance coverage. A lot coming up this week. Our congressional correspondent, Mary Bruce, starts us off with all the latest from Capitol Hill. Good morning, Mary. 
Good morning, George. Well, by the end of the day, we are likely to know how many Americans could stand to lose coverage and how premiums could be impacted. But this report card is likely to complicate this race to negotiate.